First, it's time for another dreaded pop quiz. Who here is working in the financial services industry in some aspect or another? Oh, that's, that's more than I thought. That's like at least a third, maybe half. So if you're working in the financial services industry, you probably know what a big buzzword unbundling is. But our next guests, they have another solution. They call it rebundling. And they say it gives better outcomes for banks, for consumers, for everybody. They are here to convince you. Please welcome from GFT and Fidor, Ignasi Bari and Katarina Rausch. <laughs> Hello to everyone. Hi. Is it working? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> so before starting with the presentation, let me introduce myself, Ignacy Barry, Innovation Manager in GFT. And myself, I'm Katharina Rausch. I work for Fido Bank, and uh, yeah, it's working. Welcome. And uh, yeah, free bundling. But let me share with you the love story that GFT has around innovation with CodeN. Actually, two years ago, we were here on stage presenting a blue paper around open innovation. And bottom line, the conclusion is banks and established uh, corporations should open their innovation strategy to talented solutions coming from outside their uh, company, like startups or fintechs. Actually, last year, with my colleague uh, Paco Amador, who is there recording me, we presented the GFT Digital uh, Innovation Lab. Actually, we have a lab in Spain, in Germany, in the UK, and in Brazil. And the lab is a physical space where we are working together with our customers, fintechs, and startups to create cutting-edge solutions that apply to the financial services sector. Considering our past story, and uh, I, I think that uh, we took a good path, because today it is not just GFT on stage presenting what we are doing in terms of innovation. Instead of this, it is GFT together with Fidor, one of the most innovative banks in the world, presenting our recent partnership around innovation. So now it's time to jump to the content of the presentation. And as you said before, oh, she's not here. <laughs> so please raise your hand if you have heard about the unbundling concept in financial services. Don't be shy. Come on, come on. OK, OK. So if we back to the school and we open a dictionary and we look at the unbundling definition, we are going to see that unbundling means that to divide a business into a separate parts. OK, quite clear. So now we have the what. Let's see about the how. The how is like this. So every time that we link, unbundle, and financial services, we are going to see pictures like this, that actually it is an established bank. And uh, we are seeing a tons of different solutions, quite niche, quite specific, that are solving, in a better way, they say, uh, a specific uh, problem or needs, focusing on the customer. I repeat the sentence, focusing on the customer. Actually, if we focus on the customer, the unbundling process, I don't know if it's quite, quite convenient. What you're going to see in right now is actually one of the screens of my iPhone, at least one that I can disclose in a public environment, like this one. And I have, for instance, solutions like uh, based on established banks, telcos banks with O2, for instance. Then, of course, pure digital banks, Fido Bank. But also, I have solutions for micropayments in a merchants or P2P payments. You can use Facebook nowadays, the Facebook chat, to send money to your friends. Or crowdsourcing, crowd lending, crowdfunding, crowd whatever, and the robot binary stuff, they are app and also web based. If I have to purchase something on the internet, I use PayPal. If I have to transfer money to my friends in London on, in New York, I use TransferWise. I I, you know, I work on, on an innovation team. I'm a little bit geek, so I have my Bitcoin wallet as well. And last but not least, there are a lot of applications that are not belonging to the financial services, but they use financial services like payments. Uber, Airbnb, MyTaxi, and many others, they implement payments in app. So coming back to the question, is this really unbundling convenient for the end customer? 
our conclusion is, OK, so in the previous video, we have seen 17 different apps to cover a specific niche around financial services. So for me, that is not unbundling, it's fragmentation. The second one, all these apps, they don't speak with each other, meaning they are not transferring any kind of information. Third point, every time that I have to download an app, the first thing is, OK, let's go to the Apple market, Google Play, whatever. I have to look for the app. I have to download the app. And then I have to understand how this app works, meaning that I have to get used to the user interface, uh, interface sorry, and the user experience. Third point is about the security and trust concerns. Even if there is one startup quite talented with a very good solution solving any problem of financial services, if they are new, I don't know if I'm going to trust them. But I trust the banks, the established banks, the digital banks. And last but not least, and actually link it to the previous topics, is the onboarding process. You know that if you have to onboard to a new bank, you have to provide a full KYC, full know your customer, a lot of information. And this is not the case for the, these fintechs and startups, but I guess that they would like to have this information to accelerate any kind of uh, process. Adding to that, if we take a look at the, one of the most famous mar mobile marketing uh, firms, please don't stare at the numbers. The bottom line here is it is getting more expensive and more difficult to be in your customer's pocket, to be in your customer's smartphones. But then reaching that point, I, 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 I reached the conclusion that this is something, it, I mean, it's something just happening in financial service. So that's it. It's, we have to deal with it. OK. But is it really the case? If we look for other industries and we look for the unbundling concept, we are going to see that it is occurring the same. For instance, in the car industry. But now, if we try to apply the same logic that we are seeing on the financial services to the car industry, it would represent something like this. So as a car provider, I'm going to give you all the tools, all the manuals, all the how-tos, everything, but then you will have to assemble your own car. But it is not working this way. Actually, what the car industry is doing is, before you have your car, I let you personalize the different features, components, prices, lines, etc. And after that, you will have a single unique driving experience. Wouldn't it be great to have the same in the financial services sector? Kata? I think it, uh, yeah, it, would be, it would be nice. So let's go to the next slide and find out if there is a solution or the solution we propose now that we have heard about the many disadvantages we see in unbundling. And uh, we uh, uh, introduce Finance Bay, Fido Finance Bay to you, which is a marketplace, we say, for proprietary, bank proprietary products and third party services. And uh, third party services in that sense are fintechs, insurtechs, any kind of services that relate to the financial behavior or the financial services a customer is using. And um, as, you see, as you can see here on, uh, on the two screens, um, it's, it's a marketplace on the one side and in combination with a bank account that is customizable, it's going to be the user experience you might have, you have seen for, uh, in the car industry. Basically, you as a customer browse the marketplace, you look for the services you in particular are interested in, crowd finance, robot advisory, maybe you need a loan, maybe you want to have like an innovative payment solution on blockchain and you add it to your own private banking area and, uh, and can use it there, have the information there, have one dashboard that consolidates all information uh, you, you want to, to see as a customer. So this is uh, the general picture, the concept of Finance Bay. Um, there are several 
um, several uh, advantages of that we see, and uh, we're going to go through them now step by step. So the first of it, like the, the, the pure value proposition for, for the customer is that we thereby are together really able to, to provide a financial solution for, for even the most specific needs. Because as you see, banks might uh, rather engage in products that are a bit more mainstream, um, um, but nevertheless, they have customers with very niche uh, with niche requirements, right? Very specific uh, needs. Uh, and so by combining their own offering with third-party offering, they can, they can uh, offer their customer a really nice and individualized solution. Um, then for, for the whole market, when we're talking about that, uh, we see by offering a platform, we create comparability, right? We have transparency about the product quality, about prices, and we, we let the customer choose. So usually when you have markets with a lot of comparison, with a lot of, lot of competition, you see the quality rising or the prices uh, going down. So either way, the customer is really benefiting from, from having one view that consolidates everything where he can compare and choose and, and pick the one that is most suitable for, for his need. And the last one, um, you might know Fedor is uh, engaging a bit in uh, ed educating uh, uh, customers and in um, um, positioning itself as um, a bank that wants to uh, have customer or kind of have customers um, managing their own money and having customers uh, that are owning more money in, in the end by, by engaging with the feeder products and the feeder services. So we say when we really give the customer those options and we also combine it with a nice data analysis that suggests you right solutions at the right point in time, we enable you as a customer to, to manage your money in a way that in the end uh, you're going to be, let's say, uh, wealthier and because I, I give like two examples uh, let's say you have a lot of money on your account right you just maybe don't know how what to do with it but you get a suggestion how to invest it let it be robo advisory crowd investing a saving bond you can pick it you probably have more in the end or the other way around you're kind of using your your uh, overdraft and uh, it costs you a lot of money. Um, the, the data uh, pool maybe suggests you different loan options. You pick one in the end. You you pay you pay less for the financing solutions. You you got one that is more suited to your specific need. Ah, next slide, please. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Having talked about like the general concepts, um, the rebundling part, like from a pure technical perspective, is nice because uh, it it gives it gives you like the single sign-on opportunity, right? We talked about um, the disadvantages of uh, unbundling that you have to register everywhere. You have different user experience. You have to learn different uh, user interfaces over and over again. So by having one platform with one sign-in, which you can use every kind of services that is on that platform, uh, it gives you a huge benefit. Um, which leads to the second point. This is probably more for the service provider. When you have customers that uh, that are uh, provided with a seamless, frictionless user experience, the conversion is usually higher. And if you, uh, in addition to that, engage in uh, joint marketing efforts, if you really have this suggestion that is on point, um, you, you probably have a higher conversion as well. Uh, third one, trust. We talk about it. Yes, I mean, fintechs, great. Customer, we see often still have some kind of trust issues maybe with that. So the combination of bank and fintech, I would say, creates a perfect, um, a perfect uh, solution. And rebundling that from a customer perspective adds trustworthiness to, to, to the whole concept. So um, the question now is, I mean, how, how, to, how to use that and how to onboard. And uh, Fedor, Fedor for that offers uh, a very nice infrastructure I, I, I'm going to introduce uh, to you now. Uh, the first one is uh, our APIs. So basically, we have just like very standardized interfaces uh, whereby you can connect your services to our banking database. These APIs are written in Ruby, they are RESTful, they are quite easy to onboard, they're well documented and publicly available. So in case you're interested later on, I can give you the link. 
um, they offer an outreach to, uh, to the customer base we currently have. So um, one of the advantages probably again for, for everyone joining a finance bay and joining a marketplace that like with one click or with one API connection, you not only have one customer, but you have outreach to, to a full network of customers uh, there and you can sell and promote your product among that one. And the last one, we also we covered that um, before in the beginning. Your business model or the business model of every any fintech, any injury tech, any service in that area usually requires data for scoring, for KYC, uh, for any other kind of transaction and via interfaces you can in a kind of smooth way um, provide that information and do some nice magic around it. Next one. Okay, um, the app manager is, um, is basically where you as a or where any fintech, where any of those third parties can onboard. So it's uh, first of all a, a platform, an environment where people, where kind of those services can register, uh, um, um, give information about the service, get the right SDKs, uh, have some nice support from the developer community that usually helps in onboarding and, and, and using all those different functionalities. So we, we try to, and we are still trying to make it as easy as possible, not only for the customer, right? But because it's a two-sided market, a marketplace always has to attract both sides. Um, also from a technical perspective for, for anyone engaging with this platform and onboarding and trying to interact. Last one. <laughs> okay, um, and to, to give you just an, an idea of what, what you probably or what what one can do with APIs and with the underlying infrastructure. Um, there is the feeder account system. It's also kind of like create or can be created via those interfaces. That's, for example, how O2 banking or uh, on what system O2 banking is, is being built. You might have heard about it or will hear about it if they really start uh, starting their marketing. So you have this account system created via API and you have a closed loop payment system that is working real time 24 seven and, uh, and, and at very low or let's say no cost. So um, this, these are kind of like just the infrastructural parts we offer, um, the APIs, the app manager and the accounts and closed loop payment possibilities. Um, and we an invite everyone and that is interested to, to participate in, uh, in the technical infrastructure we have, in the finance bay marketplace we have, and create a banking experience that is, in our sense, a really nice rebundled customer-centered banking experience that leads to a high customer value. Mm -hmm. ah. So last but not least, actually we didn't know how to put a bait on the, on the audience. Uh, and. Uh, Actually, we are presenting to you that if you come to the GFT boot, which is going outside and then to the right, and you arrive at the end of the of the hall, you will see the GFT boot, and you will download or will have the possibility to download the application, which is a prototype to exemplify a closed loop payment system based on the Fido uh, API system, and you will see how easy it is to buy stuff, look for uh, surrounding uh, businesses, book for a specific appointment, and so on, as a placeholder for CodeN that we've done, uh, again, as a prototype. So we know that we have uh, still time to, for two things. Katarina probably did the first one. Yeah. You want so, to share? so yeah, <laughs> already said we invite everyone to join. If there are any questions, we have one minute left for, for that. and. Uh, uh, emails uh, are, are welcome as well. Again, we are not looking for money, but for I mean, we're looking for talented solutions uh, created by fintech and startups. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Katarina Ignasi. Does anyone have a question they'd like to ask? There we go, you there. Your solution sounds really cool. Why didn't you use it for the code N right away? So you would have already 5,000 uh, customers. 
<laughs> you, <laughs> and instead we got like this uh, Monopoly money. But you mean the prototype that I have disclosed just recently? You mean that one? The closed loop payment. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we write down the suggestion for the next year. I'm pretty sure that we are aligned with Cold and we will have it too. I mean, you could purchase coffee or whatever. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> very good. Okay, please do visit their booth out in the hall. Thank you very much for being with us today on the Innovation Stage. Thanks.